Hey everybody, I'm glad you're joining us today to worship together. It's a time to gather together as families. So this is good to be with your kids and get everybody together and spend a few minutes just focusing on who God is this morning. It's a Sunday and even though we don't gather in person at church, it's important for our families to talk about faith, to pray together, to sing together. And this morning is a great win for you as a whole family to spend a little bit of time having discussion that you might not normally have uh, around the living room with your family. I want you to talk about your relationship with God. And I'll prompt you through this, but we're going to start with prayer. So gather everybody up and let's pray together. And then we're going to sing. And then I'll talk to you from the scripture. And then I'll give you some questions to spend some time together as a family uh, focusing on God this morning. All right, so hit pause, go get everybody, come back together, and let's pray. Let's pray together. God, today, as we take a look at this past year in review, it was just a crazy year. Unbelievable, really. And God, we take a minute and we just offer it up to you. All the emotions that have come, the roller coaster ride of 2020. God, we give you thanks. Thanks that we're here and we're gathered today. Thanks for the blessings that did come, even in the midst of a tumultuous year. But God, we also lift to you uh, the, the sorrow, the sadness, the sense of loss, the sense of exhaustion. And as we begin to turn and look towards this next year, we invite you into it. We invite you to take our lives, guide us and direct us. Today, Father, as we sing together, we enter into your presence in prayer and we open your scripture. I pray that you would be with us. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Hey, let's take a minute and actually sing this song together. i 
Well, it's the end of 2020, and what a year. I don't even know what you say about it. I mean, it's the most unpredictable, unbelievable roller coaster ride of a year. Tumultuous is just an understatement. In many ways, there were things that we, we felt like we lost or we lost out on, that we missed out on. I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this probably wasn't the greatest year that you've ever had. I know at least it wasn't for me and my family. And there, there are things that were just a bummer about 2020. And as we come to the end of it, man, I have a, l- a little bit of hope that it'll just go away. And yet I know there, there are always going to be tough times. And, and even with this pandemic, it, it kind of seems to continue, at least for a little while. I want you to look around and talk to your family for just a second. You can put this video on pause if you want. And and I want you just to name it a little bit. You know, I've been trying to be positive all the time about 2020 and we'll find a way and it'll be okay. We'll move forward. But there there are some things that we missed out on. There are some things we're really disappointed about. There's part of 2020 that was just a bummer. For some of us, we even lost family and friends and For some of us, financially, it was just devastating. So take a second and and go around your family. Pause the video and uh, and, and just talk for a second about 2020. And it's okay to name the things that were real bummers, the real disappointments, the real sense of loss. What was that like for you? You know, even as a pastor, I I think about this past year, we did Easter online. I mean, it just wasn't the same being with everybody. In fact, there were so many moments like that. There are so many things that it was just tough. In fact, tough's the big word that comes to mind. It was a tough year. You know, one of my favorite New Testament words is this word, Hupo meno. All right? Say it with me. Hupo meno. It's one of the best New Testament words. That, that's the Greek word. Hupo meno. Let me give you the technical translation. All right? Here, here it is. Technically, hupo meno means hang in there. It's in fact, it's loved in the New Testament. That word is used over and over uh, by several of the New Testament writers. Hupo meno. Hang in there. It actually technically means stay under. They were talking about kind of hold on, hang on, and hang in there is really a good translation of that word. And the reason that that word is so popular in the New Testament is because the people that the New Testament was written to, they had tough years. They had a lot of tough years. And they'll be encouraged, hang in there, hang in there. You know, one of the most encouraging books of the Bible is Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, the Philippian, the book of Philippians. In the book of Philippians, he says, uh, he's just giving them encouragement. He says about God, he says, He who who started a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He that started good work in you, 
He's going to be faithful to complete it. In other words, God didn't abandon you. God, God is still on mission. God's still on track. He's even on track with your life, no matter how devastated your plans were for this year. That word hupomeno then shows up all, all kinds of places. One of the best is in uh, is Romans chapter 12. Now in Romans chapter 12, this is Paul writing a benediction for the church in Rome. A benediction is, is what we say at the end of the service. I hold my hands up and I, I say this blessing over you. That word benediction just means a good word. It's being sent off with a blessing, with a good word spoken over you. I always joke, it's a prayer that we you can do with your eyes open. That's okay, because you're getting this blessing, this good word spoken over you. And Paul speaks a good word over the church in Rome. But, but we know that this is part of our scripture, and it comes down to us through the centuries as a good word spoken over you. And that word hupomeno shows up right in the middle of this. And so I, I want to read it for you today. This is Romans chapter 12, and it's sort of a long passage. We're going to start in verse 9. He's saying this to this church in Rome. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Now, that's a great triplet that Paul gives us. Uh, Let me read it again. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Joyful in hope about what's coming next, the possibilities. See, Paul always was looking to what God is about to do. Paul always had this sense that that even in the midst of trouble and turmoil, and Paul was in a lot, he, he wrote books from prison, and he would talk about them in joyful ways, knowing that God was still up to good, even when we didn't necessarily experience it at the moment. Paul had this sense of this word joy that was this deep uh, underlying sense of fulfillment and, and he would look forward with joy, hopeful and joy. But then that next phrase, patient affliction, well, that's that word hupomeno. And what he really said to them, was, be, be, be joyful in your hope, but hang in there in affliction. Hupomeno in the tough times. And in the tough year, be joyful in hope, hang in there in affliction, be faithful in prayer, keep talking to God, even in the midst of this. This is verse 13. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Paul's given them instructions for a great year, a great year going forward, right? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. He's saying, be present with the people around you. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. And then he gives them even more instructions. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That word peace is, is, is about right relationship. Live in, 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 uh, in shalom would be the word that they would use. Live in shalom with everyone. Do not take uh, revenge. And he kind of goes on. And, and then he gets to this end. And he gets to this last phrase in this benediction. And he says, do not... Be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Paul gives you a benediction, a benediction for 2020. It's been a tough year. He says, be filled with joy in the hope for what's to come, but hang in there in the affliction. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Paul encourages us to press forward. God has good things ahead. There may still be affliction. In fact, there will be. But hang in there. Hang in there. God has good ahead for you. He hasn't given up. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. 
Well, that's a good word for us as we close out 2020 with Paul's benediction and we launch into 2021. I want you to take a few minutes with whoever you're with this morning and just talk. I want you to take a look at this Romans chapter 12 and just read that second half uh, starting right there in the middle and read all the way down to Romans chapter 12. And I want you to talk for a minute about what you might do in 2021. What are the good hope, what's the good hope that you have in 2021 to be joyful in? What are the places where you're seeing God actually blessing you? And what are the things you think God might be calling you to do as a family or as individuals in your family in 2021? What do you hope for this next year? Guys, here's this encouragement. Hang in there. Hang in there. Do not be overcome with the year that's been, but overcome evil with good. Talk for a minute about how you see God at work. Even in the tough year that was, what's one way or two ways you saw God actually at work? And then what do you hope for God to do in your lives in 2021? Hey, let me pray for you. God, we're happy to close this year out. But we read over it, this benediction from Paul. In the benediction, he reminds us how to live with each other, how to live with our neighbors and the neighborhoods around us, how to actually lean in rather than be overcome, but lean in, lean in being your missionaries, your people of good, your people sharing your love with the people around us. How does it do that, God? Give us an incredible next year. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Hey, take a minute, talk together as a family, pray together, and have a great, great Sunday. And we'll see you uh, January 3rd in person and online gathering start back 1030 on January 3rd. We'll see you in the new year.